Road to the Wall Street. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. You're taking a look at a pre-game look at the stadium. Right there, Estadio Monumental in Buenos Aires, Argentina, as we have the first match of the World Cup qualifying. It's Argentina against Chile. I'm Kevan Antonio Heidari, along with Rafael Unsein, as we bring you the first match of World Cup qualifying. Last time around, well, it was, it lasted one year, six months, and 17 days. This time around, it'll be a little bit longer, and it'll go until the 12th of October, 2005, as the South American qualifiers start. Every team against each other right here in South America, where all 10 teams will play each other home and away. Oh, well, this time it's a little, little different. They're going to play two matches every time they meet instead of one match a month so a little bit of help uh, to the european teams that pay the salaries of most of the players in south america they won't complain that much this time around well this time around there will be a match today saturday and sunday and plus there will be some in midweek we'll tell you about all the matches going on in south america it starts with argentina and chile along with ecuador and venezuela today peru paraguay and on sunday it'll be uruguay bolivia and perhaps the world champions will start in Colombia in one of the toughest matches as they go to Barranquilla to play Colombia. It'll be the, the first qualifying match for Ronaldo. He's never played a qualifying match. He's played three World Cups already. Well, that's a good fact to point out. And there we see the lineups as we have Caballero in goal, Walter Samuel, Vivas, Roberto Ayala, Sanetti, then in the back, Verón, Cristian Gonzalez, Pablo Aymar, D'Alessandro in the midfield. There's some changes there. And there, the absolute debut, Cesar Delgado, along with Hernán Crespo. Chile. Nelson Tapia, the veteran on goal, gets the call from coach Juvenal Olmos, Pablo Contreras, Olarra, Álvarez, Meléndez, González, Reinaldo Navia, and Tapia. Those are the two forwards. Pérez, Marcel, and González. The lineup for Chile today at the Monumental Stadium in Buenos Aires. I'm surprised the fans are not attending today's well, match they'll fill up that they'll stadium up, hopefully. soon enough but, uh, 56,449 bid into Estadio Monumental de Núñez normally Rivers home field but it's also the home of the Argentine national team. Well, they were crowned in 1928 World Cups for the uh, champions for the first time but this time around their fans are not completely happy with uh, Marcelo Bielsa and the national team the players said they have to gain their confidence and, and make the fans love back, love them again like they did uh, during the last qualifying. Well, They're here's the problem. Marcelo Bielsa is a bit of a hard-headed man. He's a successful coach, but in Argentina, only winning the big time. The big one counts, and they were knocked out of the World Cup. Not only did they not make it to the second round, they also lost to England. Yes. And that is a tough pill to swallow for any Argentine. So when we come back, we'll have the match from Buenos Aires next on this special edition of Road to the World Cup 2006. He decides. And there we have it, Ubaldo Aquino. I think he knows the camera's on him. And there we have it. The party begins. The first World Cup qualifying match for 2006 World Cup right here at Goal TV Production. Argentina hosting Chile. And there you see Verón with his first pass going forward, chasing the ball. It'll be number 19, Rafael Olarra, with the long pass up front, up the sideline. Seems like the field's a little bit slippery. Well, it's still winter in Buenos Aires, although it's getting warmer. There you see Cesar Delgado with his first touch in a World Cup qualifier, and he's fouled. Well, Chile has Nelson Tapia in goal, Cristian Álvarez, Pablo Contreras, Rafael Olarra, Francisco Rojas in the back. Midfielders Fernando Martel, Mario González, Rodrigo Pérez, and Mark González up front, Reinaldo Navia and Héctor Tapia. So here we see Olarra and Tapia on your screen. Samuel goes up to head it. And now it's chasing the ball. Number eight, Martel, a surprise starter because Mirosevic, the attacking midfielder, Milovan Mirosevic, who plays here in Argentina for Racing, was not able to play in this match. 
There we see Roberto Ayala, the defender. He's a veteran. Solid player for Valencia. There were talks that a lot of teams wanted him, Manchester United and Real Madrid, but he stayed at Valencia. Martel, an in-swinger. There's a dangerous ball. Caballero gets a hold of it. No problem at all for the Celta de Vigo keeper. Now he sends it long. It was the first corner kick of the match for Chile. Now Delgado chases it. The Cruz Azul player and forces Nelson Tapia to clear it over the sideline. D'Alessandro, one touch, Aymar. We were talking about here how those two are supposed to be the creators behind the front runners for Argentina. Delgado and Crespo. We'll see, I think D'Alessandro will be more in charge of getting wider and Aymar of linking the other midfielders along with the full. There's no call here from Ubaldo Aquino, no foul on Aymar, and he called an uh, offensive foul that time. So the ball back in play, Argentina, and Ayala looks back, chases it, watch out. Uh, he in the situation has gotten called for a few red cards in his career. The Ayala's player the sometimes, captain. Yeah. Here's D'Alessandro, one of the most talented players you will see, one of my favorite. He was transferred to Wolfsburg. I'm surprised he, dis he agreed to go to Germany. I think it'll do him good. He was thrown out of a match for Wolfsburg two weeks ago for arguing with the referee. He got a yellow card, he made a gesture, and he got the red card. And that's so the kind of lessons he will have to learn that's the in first, Germany. That's the first uh, German lesson. A little discipline. For uh, D'Alessandro. Yes. Nelson Vivas, the veteran defender. Surprise, Vivas is a starter. He'd been injured. And there's a long ball chasing Aymar. Aymar goes down. No call. So the man from Cordoba complains that he should have gotten a call right there. As we see Aquino saying, enough of that. So last year, here we see, yeah, a bit of a push. You can't tell whether it was shoulder to shoulder. He got pushed from behind. But it certainly wasn't bad enough to call a penalty. So Sanetti, the captain for Inter on the Argentine national team. There you see a turn for D'Alessandro. Sanetti turns on. The Jets goes up the wing. And Delgado tries to get a cross in. And it's cleared over the end line for a corner kick for Argentina. Well, let's uh, give Delgado one more chance. He still seems that he does not fit well on the team. Let's see if the youngster recovers himself and gets into the match. So Perez defended against him, gave up a corner kick for Chile. There we see Hernan Crespo. Now a player for Chelsea. Last minute transfer from Inter to Chelsea in the Premier League. Here's Samuel looking to come forward for the header and cleared out by Chile. Chile trying to counterattack. Now Veron sticks himself in, keeps the ball in play. And it's a foul call by Aquino. So, Peron. So, Argentina and Chile going at it again the same way they did in the opener of the 19, well, the 2002 World Cup qualifiers, which started in 1999. So, Here we see Marcelo Bielsa, the coach we were talking about. Controversial coach. He was brought back. You mentioned you were a bit surprised. Some people speculate it was because the Argentine Federation owed them money from the 2002 World Cup campaign, and they had no other option than to re-sign him. Otherwise, they would have had to pay for him and pay for a new coach. Well, to be fair with Bielsa, he had almost a perfect campaign in the last qualifying. He only lost seven points in total so well after that it was a nightmare at the world cup in japan but that's the, the whole they analyzed the whole process and they agreed to give him another chance 
Aymar. Here we see Aymar. Aymar cuts inside between three defenders. He had nobody to play on the outside, and he had the ball on his right foot, which meant he had he had a defender right on that foot. So Aymar dribbles himself into a corner, and it's a goal kick for Chile. Chile hoping to hang on. They know that they they're hoping just for a point here, and then they can go to Santiago and rack up the points there. That is their strategy for the World Cup qualifying campaign. Fernando Martel with the ball trying to cross. Good marking from Kili Gonzalez. He loses, he loses eyesight with the ball, eye contact. He still recovers, sends a cross in, saved by Samuel. Sends it to the corner kick. We take a look at Martel, a bit of an embarrassing play for, for the player because he kicked it away from himself, but he won a corner kick out of it. There we see Hector Tapia on your screen. It'll be the second corner kick for Chile. An in-swinger again. And it'll be another throw-in for Chile. Chile coming forward just as much as Argentina here in the first seven minutes of the match. Well, that's what Coach Juvenal almost said. They were not going to go and camp out in the back. They're going to play their game in midfield. They're trying to do that. Oh, Linesman says the ball went over the line. I don't think so, but it will be a goal kick now for Argentina. Marcos Gonzalez coming back. Oh, it's a foul then. Meron opens it up. There's Juvenal Olmos, 42 years of age. The coach for Chile. Former coach of Universidad Católica, Antofagasta, and O'Higgins of Rancagua in Chile. And then he also coached in Irapuato, Mexico, and Vargam in, in Belgium. So, some of the things you may notice, Marcelo Salas is not with the team. And, of course, Ivan Zamorano retired from football, including national team play. It clears there by Marco Gonzalez. Alessandro with the throw-in. Alessandro cuts it, tries to turn the 360. On the outside, Gonzalez. Look at this one across from Delgado, the only man in the middle, Hernan Crespo. Nelson Tapia clears it, sends the ball up, looking for the head of his attacker. It was Hector Tapia heading it forward. He's trying to play with Reinaldo Navia, the player for Colo Colo. Good play right there is a hard tackle from Cristian Alvarez. Now here comes Chile. Navia plays it back to Alvarez. A long ball. This one's going to be difficult for Tapia to latch on to. He gives up on it. And Ayala chases it down. Oh, there you saw Chile trying to counter quickly with a bad pass from Fernando Martel. But look at the good tackle by the Chilean right defender, Christian Alvarez. So, Argentina in their last match before the qualifying started, they beat Uruguay 3 to nothing, and things certainly turned around when D'Alessandro came in and he started linking up with Pablito Aymar. Also, Christian Gonzalez was a key piece to that puzzle. He wasn't match fit. He is now. Well, at least Bielsa believes he is, and this is a man who is never out of fitness. Javier Sanetti plays it inside with the right foot, gets it stolen away. Chile tries the long ball. Samuel plays it to his left foot as Navia chases him. And now Crespo on the outside, fouled by the Chilean defender. And it'll be a free kick for Argentina. The referee, uh, uh, Waldo Aquino. Yep, Waldo Aquino. Right there, aware of everything, the foul from the captain, Pablo Contreras, who plays in Celta with Pablo Caballero. Yeah, he is a teammate of Pablo Caballero. We'll see. Contreras scored only one goal for the national team for Chile. Did you see there a quick taken, quickly taken free kick, and Verón mishit that ball. Trying to find somebody in the middle. This is, look at the bench for Argentina. Franco Quiroga, who was supposed to play instead of 
Nelson Vivas, Placente Almeida Saviola López, and Lucho González from River Plate. Well, one of the things is that the veterans such as Verona and Almeida have said, well, if Bielsa says I must sit on the bench, I will do it. So the veterans sort of sensing a change in the guard, knowing that they're useful, but they better not make waves. And a lot of them talk about revenge, and they say, well, revenge, it won't be revenge for the World Cup. We'll get that in 2006 in Germany. Well, Valdano yesterday said uh, from his vacation that uh, he believes Argentina needs to find new players before it's too late. And uh, that's slowly that's what Marcelo Bielsa is doing today with Delgado and Alessandro and Neymar, pretty much. But uh, maybe not enough for Valdano to be happy with the changes in the Argentina national team. Now, uh, Saviola, Riquelme, there's a lot of players. Oh, Chile's bench. Vargas in goal, Jorge Vargas the defender, Pinillo, Pinilla. There we see another attempt by Fernando Martel, a player who plays in Mexico to get the cross in. Juvenal almost. Right now, I think his team looks pretty solid. They seem organized as we come up on the 13-minute mark. In Argentina, of course, it feels different here. It doesn't feel like a World Cup qualifier because First of all, they did not receive the confetti, the confetti um, welcome to the stadium. The stadium is not full as it usually is for an Argentina match. And what it is is that for an Argentina, it's not enough to win. Here comes the through ball. Crespo tries to get around the corner. Not Tapia latches onto the ball. And Crespo applauds not just the pass, but also the performance of the goalkeeper. Well, a mistake from Chile coming out. The ball ended in Alessandro's left foot and a perfect assist. But a good job by Tapia to steal the ball from uh, the forward for Argentina. So, well, the best Gonzalez chance no, goes so down. far. Well, there's a clear opportunity there. You see, he finds he finds the alley between two defenders. He plays it to the outside and not far enough to get it away from Nelson Tapia, the veteran. So Nelson Tapia played for. Universidad Católica for so many years. Well, Jan says Aquino, again, is letting the play go on, fluid. Chile on the attack, good attack this time. Someone has it covered. Alessandro waits for his teammate to come up and gives him a pass, and Gonzalez now loses the ball, and D'Alessandro comes in for the tackle. Martel sends the ball. We're not sure what he was trying to do there. I don't think he knows what he's trying to do. He was probably trying to cross the ball to the far post, but... Marcelo Bielsa, he was usually standing last ball fine. He would never sit down. This match, he's sitting down, maybe to stay away from the fans. So... Chile playing a 4-4-2. Argentina playing a 3-2-2-2, which is a really 3-3-2-2 is a 3-5-2, except with two players move forward and two and three behind them. So. Cold kick taken see. by Pablo Contreras. Long ball from Chile. Argentina clears it out. Outside of the foot pass, a wall pass right now. Now they try something on the left side. Martel chases it down. He does get to it. Caballero halfway. And Verón touches it out. First time as Argentina suffers a little bit of a scare. Well, the it scare looks a little bit disorganized at the back there. Caballero did not decide what to do. He did not know if he should go for that ball or stay. He stayed in the middle. Huge mistake. He could have paid for that one. Delgado comes back, plays it with D'Alessandro, picks his head up outside of the foot pass. On the outside, looking for Sanetti, trying to get around the corner. He does so, Olarra can't close. Here comes the cross from Sanetti, nobody there. Cristian Gonzalez takes the shot. Who's in the middle? It looks like he might be offside, and there's the call. Offside on Javier Sanetti. And he fell asleep a little bit after the run up the wing. And he recognizes the fact that he was offside. It was a long sprint for Javier Sanetti. He made it to the end line and got that cross in the box. 
then he definitely was late coming back. Of course, Sanetti played all 270 minutes for Argentina in the World Cup. Nicolara taking the goal kick. And he played in the 1998 World Cup, an iron horse for Argentina. So, Ayala bringing it up. The ball through the middle. Ayala also a World Cup veteran of two World Cups. D'Alessandro, one of the more interesting players, came out of River Plate. There's a nice back heel. Delgado floats it up looking for Crespo. Headed out by Chile, Christian Alvarez, and now it's Martel. This man creating out of the back, organizing. Now here comes D'Alessandro. Delgado with a cross, and a missed chance for Hernan Crespo as he almost gets his head on it. He certainly got a few hair, locks of hair on that ball. He did not make contact by inches. Crespo with a good play. D'Alessandro for Delgado on mark. Good cross, perfectly placed, and Crespo definitely missed that one. Crespo, instead of throwing himself at the wall, he held back a little bit on the jump as he got behind the defender. Now Argentina turns it up a notch. Here comes Sanetti. Plays it on the outside to Gonzalez. Now D'Alessandro plays the wall pass, cut off by the Chilean defender, and it's good work by number two, Cristian Alvarez. And a tough foul by Verón. And Verón might get a yellow card. Look at that, already getting a little bit nasty. Verón went really strong. We'll see that tackle again. And yeah, Aquino has a yellow card in the 22nd minute. So Verón interpreting his defensive midfielder role as Alvarez was coming out. The player from Universidad Católica, Christian Alvarez. There you see that. Ooh. Well, usually when, when the team that's attacking loses the ball and the other team has it coming out quickly, the defensive midfielder has to come out and pressure and sometimes even foul to slow him down. And that's what Verón thought he needed to do there. Well, Verón actually pulled out the machete there as he took down Cristian Alvarez, born in the 20th of January, 1980. His debut for with the Chilean national team was against Ecuador in October of 2000. And we see the header from Samuel. And now it, it'll be Sanetti kicking off. And Nelson Vivas comes up the side. And it looks like Martel chasing him down. And Ubaldo Aquino says, let's wait, gentlemen, because I'm calling a foul right here. And Nelson Vivas will take the free kick. So Sanetti looking for D'Alessandro, who can turn to the outside as well as to the inside with the outside or the inside of his left foot. And now he catches himself with the sideline. On the outside, plays the ball to Cristian Gonzalez. And I think here's what happens. When Argentina comes up on the right side, on the right flank, they're able to get the cross in. When they come up on the left, watch out, here's a shot from Aymar. As their teammates are asking him to take those free kicks more quickly. As we were saying, when Argentina comes up on the left flank, they seem to hit a swamp over there with three or four players in a reduced space. When they come up on this side, they get the cross in. Well, because Vivas is not pushing up that much, and Gili Gonzalez is pushing up, and there's, like you said, too many people on the left side. And meanwhile, Cesar Delgado is opening a lot. It, to the right side and taking advantage of that space. But I'm sure Bielsa knows that and he's got, that's our, his plan. We see Delgado turning more of a provider of crosses uh, rather than as a center forward who's supposed to head them in. So, Chile, since coming in on Thursday, they weren't able to train on that day because of the rain in Buenos Aires. Of course, it feels a little heavier than you would like. But these teams are used to playing in wintry South American conditions. And here we see the wall pass. One of the reasons Argentine, Uruguayan players, and sometimes the Chileans do better when they go to Europe than do the Colombians, Ecuadorians, and sometimes even the Brazilians from the north of Brazil. They're used to the cold. Watch out, here's a pass. 
Aymar, Alessandro and Aymar already found each other a few times. And there comes Veron. No, that was uh, D'Alessandro. As he puts a two-footed slide tackle on the Chilean defender. And Argentina turns up the pressure. There's Gaba with the cross. Looking for somebody in the middle. Headed out by Chile. And now Gonzalez. Now Veron behind the creative midfielder, Sanetti. Veron interpreting a new position. Delgado again crossing it from the wing. Aymar gets it under control, turns it back inside. And it's D'Alessandro looking on the inside. On the edge. Is somebody going to take a shot? Yes, it is right here. Cristian Gonzalez with a shot for Argentina in the 25th minute of the match. Chile's playing with danger. They're waiting in their own 18-yard line, and we were in Argentina pretty much moving the ball all around, looking for the opening space. So far, only a shot. There's, there's no penetration, but living dangerously there, Chile. Well, Argentina tried the formula. That's how they got their third goal against Uruguay. A series of passes on the outside between Aymar and D'Alessandro led to that goal from D'Alessandro. Oh. Third goal of the match. And here's a dangerous foul for Chile. It was a play sort of like this, and where they, they got the tie against Argentina in World Cup qualifiers for 1998 here in Buenos Aires. Sanetti crossing Mark Gonzalez there. Sanetti did not believe he committed a foul. So Waldo Aquino said, yes, it's a free kick. Definitely was a foul. Well, in this situation, it might have normally been David Pizarro, the player for Udinese, who had been transferred, well, who had been rumored to be transferred to Lazio and Juventus in the summer. Tapia wants to take it. So we'll see who takes it for Chile. Nelson Tapia. Seven men on the wall? Actually, Hector Tapia, yes, a lot of men on the wall for Argentina. It's set up, if they had a left footer, they might curl it. It'll be Hector Tapia underneath the wall! Around the wall, actually, Caballero has no problems with it. Well done, Caballero for, put a wall to protect the near post, and he had the back post covered. Well, Caballero suffered on a free kick in the World Cup against Sweden. Svensson scored, remember that? The top corner, this time he's well placed. Cesar Delgado, Sanetti, Vivas, Sanetti, some close control passing, and Olarra doesn't play around with it and clears it for a throw. -in. D'Alessandro holds on to the ball, he gets pulled down from behind. He should be careful because with that reaction, he may get the call. Yeah, yeah yep. Aquino's warning him verbally. Well, he seems he did not learn his lesson in Germany yet. And Alessandro saying, are you crazy? He's pulling me from behind. Yeah, but look at the reaction from Alessandro. He's upset. A number 18, Rodrigo Melendez, who followed him from behind. Melendez plays for Quilmes in Argentina. Crespo wants the ball in the penalty spot. We're not going to take it. Dangerous free kick, only one man wall. And here from the back comes Aymar. Watch out here, Veron takes it. Somebody at the far post, it's D'Alessandro sticking his legs in. And he claims that it should be a corner kick. We don't know what Ubaldo Aquino will call. Well, I think that's a wrong person to be in the far post, D'Alessandro. A little bit somebody like a forward, like Delgado or a defender might have better luck. Nobody behind Crespo, that's a mistake. Well marked actually by Navia because Nadia came all the way back from his forward position. Here comes Argentina. Cesar Delgado with Crespo, and now Sanetti on the outside. Well defended there. Chile looks very solid in the back right now. Yeah, but they're too far in their own 18-yard box. And eventually a mistake or a good play by an Argentine Playmaker going to do the miss. Perez on the ball. As we hear the Chilean bench yelling to the players to come, well, to mark on the sideline. And 
So just to let you know, of course, Chile and Argentina playing here, but we also will have other matches today. Ecuador against Venezuela. Ecuador qualified for the last World Cup. Venezuela under Richard Paez had five straight matches, five straight victories in the last qualifying campaign before losing to Brazil in the last match at home. Well, they even beat Chile in Santiago, and that uh, put them ahead of them in the, in the standings. Chile ended last. They play. beat Bolivia. They beat Uruguay. They tied Colombia. Well, that was in Venezuela, but that's where the, everything started. I think uh, from there they changed their mentality. And that's when Colombia changed the coaches, mm -hmm. and they brought in Maturana. Yeah. They blame uh, Garcia for not beating Venezuela in Venezuela, and they would know better later. Venezuela started to improve a lot and changed their pretty much their mentality. They started getting points in. That's an upside, Crespo. So we'll see whether Venezuela can maintain their progress in World Cup qualifying right here. Here's a man who's had notable progress in the last four years, D'Alessandro. Here's a shot from Gonzalez. It's a goal, Gonzalez, Gonzalez, Gonzalez. Goal, goal, goal. And we talked about that mid-range shot that could open up the scoring for Argentina. Well, they couldn't penetrate. They had trouble. They were moving the ball all around the box. But finally, a goal scored. And it was about time because Chile was waiting in their own 18-yard box. They were all bunkered in their own 18-yard box, and eventually Argentina was going to find a space, and it was Kili Gonzalez. So Christian Gonzalez with the goal, Asco. Right there, all alone, 25 yards from the goal, takes two steps forward, and Nelson Tapia watches it go by. Tapia maybe covered, could not see the ball. Pablo Contreras in front of him. Might be a little bit responsible there, Tapia. So maybe Tapia was unsighted, but I'm surprised he didn't dive for it. Now it's going to be difficult for Chile to come back as Argentina may open the floodgates with that goal. Yeah, because Chile now, I mean, unless they are happy with a 1-0 loss, well, Bielsa doesn't show any emotions, but I'm sure he feels very good right now. That's, uh, pa that's part of the reason that the Argentine public can't seem to gain some affection for his team. He doesn't seem to enjoy the process. Too much stress, too much. And, uh, well, now, if, if Chile is content with a 1-0, they're going to continue playing like that. If not, they're going to have to come out from the back. That's going to be easier for Argentina to find spaces. Crespo. So, Rodrigo Melendez. Blocks the pass from Sanetti. Sanetti now plays it over to the other side to Samuel. So, just a reminder, in the 1998 World Cup qualifiers in this very stadium, well, Chile was down one goal until they tied it on a free kick. So, there you see a banner right behind there, which the Argentine fans declare their undying love for Diego Maradona. Of course, that's a never-ending love story. Of course, Maradona will be watching some of these games from Cuba, where he currently resides. As we see Olarra down, the defender Rafael Olarra, Matias Almeida, the Inter of Milan player getting ready to, to warm up. He's warming up. We don't know who he might come in for. I thought maybe the substitution might be Saviola for Delgado, except that Delgado seems to be playing well. Well, I think uh, Verón, after that yellow card, I think it's a liability, and Bielsa probably wants to take him out of there. And now that they're winning, and supposedly Chile's going to attack some more, they need a real defensive destroying midfielder there instead of Verón. So you see Rodrigo Melendez plays for Quilmes in Argentina. So D'Alessandro with the ball, finds an alley. Aymar, 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 Aymar. Go, go, go for Argentina. Great goal for Argentina. 
Well, the two, young, two youngsters get together, a great pass. That was at least the fourth time that Alessandro has tried to find somebody in the box, or he did find somebody in the box. This time, his attacking midfield partner, Pablito Aymar, the little clown. Well, he there we, a nice goal. we talked about how those two players had to link up together to create for the front runners in Argentina. They said, forget the front runners, we'll create for each other. Here's offside Crespo right there. Then he waits, and he gets back onside and finds Aymar coming in on the left side. You see Crespo pushing out to the right, creating the space for Aymar behind the defender, and Alessandro finds Aymar and one times it past the goalkeeper. Perfect. Incredible vision from D'Alessandro. One of the things I think was also worth noting is the fact that D'Alessandro held on to the ball until his man was open and until Crespo got back onside. And the ball with a perfect pace, the perfect touch for Alessandro to beat the defender. So in the 36th minute, Argentina leads 2 to nothing. As we see, now Argentina finding some spaces in the Chilean defense, which held very well for the first 20 minutes of the match. Oh, well, slowly but surely, Argentina's winning back their fans. Oh, a player twisted his ankle by himself. There it is again, Rodrigo Melendez. Definitely, he does not, con cannot continue. The players make a uh, motion letting know Juvenal Olmos that he needs to substitute Rodrigo Melendez. He's been quiet today on the field and now unluckily he twisted his ankle. Cannot continue. He's got a bit of a Mapuche Indian look to him. So maybe now it's the time for Mirosevic to come in, the playmaker. So they were saving Mirosevic because I think they're giving up the points in Argentina. Chile came in to hold on, but now it's going to be tough for them to get back two goals. But you'll see Milovan Mirosevic. He will probably come in for Rodrigo Melendez, the player from Quilmes in Argentina. There you see the chief, Melendez. Looks a little bit like Caupolicán, for those of you who know Chilean history. It's a uh, famous Chilean Polo, Polo. team. That's right. Looks Indian like. chief. And here's Gonzalez. Aymar, the wall pass. The spaces open up. D'Alessandro on the left. All one time. Delgado. And here comes Aymar again. And it would have been a great goal had he connected. But it's worth put that on the highlight reel. Anyway. Oh, well, started with Kili Gonzalez. Started. Overlap. Good pass by Aymar. Kili Gonzalez. Finds Alessandro unmarked in the middle. And look at that. Two forwards with one marker each. Very dangerous for Chile. Even though they're defending, they cannot figure out. Aymar with the momentum taking him far to the right. Well, the markers did their job. They were taking their man. However, they took care of the defender, of the yep. forwards. Yep. However, Aymar was smart because after he gave the pass, he moved all the way across the field. So Argentina starting to click right now as we hit the 39 minute mark of the first half as they lead Chile two to nothing on the first World Cup qualifier on the road to Germany 2006. I'm Kevan Antonio Heidari along with Rafael Unsein. We bring you the action from Monumental Stadium in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Outside Delgado there on that one. Cesar Delgado. already the ankle of Rodrigo Melendez with ice and Mirosevic comes in like we expected Mirosevic the attacking midfielder with number 17 they don't place it back Cristian Gonzalez now coming out of the back he plays with Aymar And at Pablo Aymar, the player for Valencia, is fouled. <laughs> so we're going to see. It's going to be tough for Ariel Ortega to find his way back into this formation. He plays more on the right side. 
when Gallardo also, I think those two players, they missed their the boat already. Because behind these two, it's uh, Riquelme also waiting his chance. Here comes Argentina. And D'Alessandro. Looking for trouble. And so we see Olarra as he covers the ball. Chile, of course, it's going to be difficult for them to get a point out of this match, but they need to watch the goal differential, too, because over a long 18-game stretch, it could make a difference. And, of course, the South American qualifying is a marathon, not a sprint. Medon recovers the ball. He's interpreting his new role very well. Less of a distributor, more of an organizer. And there, Aymar steals the ball. Here comes Sanetti. He looks up. Who's there in the middle? And Aymar tries to get a second goal. And the ball cleared. Sanetti with all the time and space, but could not find a target. He had to hold on to the ball. You see, he looks up. There's three, four options. He took one option, Aymar, and, well, Mark. Aymar by Marco Gonzalez. So here's Aymar. D'Alessandro finds the diagonal. Delgado plays it back in the middle. Cleared out by Chile. And Aymar and D'Alessandro, they are basically linked by an umbilical cord as they move over to the right side now. And D'Alessandro now does some of his, shows some of his skill. As these two guys they probably are taking showers together, they're eating together, they're doing everything they can to understand each other on and off the field because that is a key to Argentina and their World Cup qualifying campaign as Marcelo Bielsa has shifted his, his strategy. As we see Pablo Contreras, the veteran and the captain for Chile getting a yellow card. In the 42nd minute and a half almost, Pablo Contreras with a foul from behind on Crespo. And Waldo Aquino did, does not like that, those kinds of fouls. Well, first yellow card for Chile. Now whether he likes him or not, he's got to sanction them. So he gave a yellow card. It was a foul from behind. And another foul another from foul. behind. See Marcelo Bielsa giving some instructions. And here comes Chile on the counterattack. Caballero holds on to it as Martel has been marked out of the match. Actually, Argentina took the ball away from Chile, and we haven't seen Martel anymore. A good long ball, Martel, with some chance, some with that opportunity. Well defended by Samuel. And Argentina back on the attack. So Chile basically looking to see which players also can stand up to the World Cup qualifying pressure because their next match is against Peru at home and they expect to win that match. And Cristian Alvarez, the player, said, you know what, when we left the airport in Santiago, on the outskirts of Santiago traveling to Argentina, he said, you know what, we didn't expect such a warm departure from our fans. Oh, fans always have great hopes when qualifying starts. But after this match, I don't know what the situation is going to be. A Peru plays against Paraguay at home, so if they start well, their confidence will increase. Well, I think he also referred to the fact that Chile finished last in the last World Cup. Then we see Argentina play keep away in short spaces now that they open it up. Looks a bit of like a training exercise. Very well done by Argentina. They're 2 nothing up. They're waiting for the end of the first half. I think maybe one minute of added time from Ubaldo Aquino, the Paraguayan referee. Got one or two minutes. Remember Melendez's injury a couple of times he was on the ground. Alessandro. Sanetti. Verón. 
Samuel, one of the things that moving D'Alessandro up and pulling Verón back does is it gives the unpredictability factor of, of D'Alessandro on the dribble or on the through pass. Canetti pushing into the middle. Good ball from the back for Argentina. Actually played it wide, nobody there. Cristian Gonzalez on the outside. I, I'm not complaining, he was kicked. So, the crowd warming up to the Argentine national team. It could be a slow burn all the way to 2006. It, because if they like what they see, the next match you'll see them come out in force. D'Alessandro steps on it. Waits for Gonzalez. Gets the back heel. Combination there. Chile desperate to clear the ball out. They're struggling big time. They're hoping for this first half to be over soon. Chile tries to regroup. But they're limited to just clearing the ball as Argentina now gets the ball under the boots and it's going to be difficult for anybody to take them away. Here's a header to the back. Delgado, great play by Argentina. Gonzalez spotted Delgado at the far post. Well, first direct shot really by Gonzalez. He's been crossing most of them from the right. Here only two defenders again. Three on three in the box, that's not good. They should at least have one extra defender always. Delgado could not put that ball on target. Aymar with eyes on the back of his head. Usually good playmakers do have eyes behind their head, no? Really with the ball. Presto. Chile will take the free kick right now. That's and it. that's the end of the first half. Ubaldo Aquino blows his whistle. And it's a clear, well, a clear partial result right now for Argentina as they lead Chile 2 to nothing. And we'll be back with a halftime highlight. option for Marcelo Bielsa. On the bench for Argentina is Leo Franco, the keeper, Quiroga Facundo, Diego Placente, Matias Almeida, Javier Saviola, and Claudio El Piojo Lopez. Lopez may, be, may find it difficult to get back into the national team with the performance that we've seen from some of the newcomers. So now we restart the match and Gonzalez floats it in the middle. It's Chile with the ball as they try to strike in the first minute of the second half. Christian Gonzalez scored the first goal of the match and of the World Cup qualifiers for 2006. Oh, well, no, qual no substitutions for Bielsa in Argentina. You see Verón back in his holding midfield position. So just to remind you, the last time these two teams played in a World Cup qualifying match in this stadium, it was Argentina which beat Chile 4-1. to one. Here comes Delgado, he gets around his defender. He floats the ball to the back, it's right on! And Crespo misses a golden opportunity. Crespo, the second ball he misses, good cross, and Pablo Contreras, the defender, could not clear the ball, Crespo behind him, expected the ball to be cleared maybe, and he they missed it completely. Both of them miss. Contreras missed on the header, Crespo missed on the shot. Delgado marked by Rafael Olarra. That's incredible for a center forward. He's got to check his eyesight. That's twice today he's missed by inches. Well, Olarra, well, is having trouble marking Delgado. Delgado seems to be faster and more mobile. And then Olarra can handle. There's Fernando Marcel fouling D'Alessandro, quickly taken. Combination D'Alessandro and Gonzalez. D'Alessandro ends up with the ball, plays it to the outside, through the feet, across in the middle. Olarra clears it. And Argentina quickly putting on the pressure on Chile in the second half. 
Bad clearance by Alvarez across from Delgado. Alvarez sticks his foot out. Another Still in play. Delgado is a great crosser of the ball from what we can tell. We don't know how he'll do as a scorer. On the first side, in the first half, it was all from the right. He started the second half on the left side and again creating problems, getting open and sending crosses in. Ayala almost gets in a bit of trouble clearing the ball with his back heel. Alessandro. Veron, one time, plays it wide. And now it's Delgado on the left side. He's moved over from the right side. Alessandro misses the pass. Veron now interpreting his new role in the Argentine symphony by kicking the ball away and diving at the feet of the Chilean attacker. Marcelo Bielsa, as we see him right there, well, as coach, he's been, he's won 70% of the points that he's had in dispute for Argentina. And also, it's the highest percentage of any of the recent coaches for the Argentine national team. Argentina on the attack, it's D'Alessandro with the ball. It's all on the left in the second half. Now it's a foul and a yellow card. And the yellow card is going to be for substitute Mirosevic, the player from Racing de Avellaneda in Argentina, first division. He substituted Melendez, who got injured. You see the foul on de Alessandro. It was not too bad. So the referee, Ubaldo Aquino, the Paraguayan, gives the young Chilean midfielder the yellow card. The second yellow card for Chile. Pablo Contreras got the other one. That was in the 42nd minute of the first half. Now Mirosevic with the yellow card in the fourth minute of the second half. Delgado coming back. It's Sanetti all the way back in defense, playing with look where Crespo is all the way in midfield, trying to open spaces, trying to get rid of the tough marking by the Chileans. Sanetti is taken down. And a foul will be taken now by Juan Sebastián Verón, wears number 11 in honor of his father, Juan Ramón Verón. Both players of La, from La Plata. De from Estudiantes of La Plata. Here comes D'Alessandro. And he gets the ball kicked away from him. D'Alessandro is certainly the interesting novelty for Argentina. Play a little bit better than Pablito Imara, although Pablito Imara scored a very nice goal in the first half, the second one of the game. D'Alessandro has been busier and, and has been more involved in good play in this game. So Sanetti cuts inside. Sanetti the train. Looks up, gets around the corner, puts a good cross in the middle. Aymar lifts the ball, gets caught in a trap between three defenders. Delgado with the shot. Nelson Tapia clears it. Great save by Tapia. That shot straight at him, though, from Delgado. After Sanetti dribbled past everyone for at least 40 yards. Long ball for Delgado. Delgado. Poorly Dan clear. Alessandro looks up. He could do something here. He takes a shot and he misses. You could oh. see him looking around for teammates. He said, should I pass or should I shoot this ball? Well, the terrible clearance for Rafael Olarra after the cross from Delgado. And give the ball nonetheless to D'Alessandro. Look at the shot from Delgado in the sixth minute. Well done. Look at this, D'Alessandro. He puts the blinders on right there. They talk his mind and he keeps going to, to go. That's Mark Gonzalez losing. It's going to be a throw-in for Chile. Throw-in for Chile as they try to come back from two goals down. They are playing the first World Cup qualifying game at Estadio Monumental Antonio Liberti in Buenos Aires, Argentina. There we see Tapia, Hector Tapia, the player from Lille, getting fouled. Juvenal almost seems to be distracted by something because he's trying to find a formula for his team to come back. Chile Gonzalez fouling Tapia could have been a yellow card in the seventh minute. 
Well, Aquino consulting with his first assistant. You don't know what he's going to call here. Well, assistant said Kili Gonzalez has some blood on his shirt, probably coming out of his nose. So now he's got to leave the field and get taken care of. Well, Aquino consulting with Nelson Cano. Why is Kili mad with the linesman? He's just doing his job. He cannot play with blood on his nose. crowd starts to warm up to the Argentine national team. You see Ayala right there defending. Chile hoping to come back from a two-goal deficit. Gonzalez. Here by Ayala. Ayala, the captain. Vero now comes up playing. Here comes Argentina. Delgado's had a good match. He's uh, getting around and a good tackle from Olarra at the back. And well, he stops the counterattack. Yeah, the good stop by Olarra because Argentina was coming full speed, speed ahead. Cesar Delgado on the right with Pablo Aymar with a give and go. Cesar Delgado now with Cruz Azul in Mexico, former player Rosario Central in Argentina. His debut in World Cup qualifying, Delgado floats the ball. Tapia. Clears it. And it'll be... Argentine throw in. Where in the eighth minute of the second half, Argentina leads two to nothing. Watch out, Ayala slices it off his boot. As Navia chases. And Gonzalez, Verón, can try to control the ball. Verón gets stuffed as he tries the outlet pass. Well, the only difference I see is Chile pressuring a little bit more in Argentina's half, trying to prevent them from coming out comfortably from the back. Chile winning the challenges in midfield. Well, in the history of these two teams, Chile has never beaten Argentina, if not in Santiago. They've played 71 matches, Argentina has won 50. They've tied 16, and Chile has won five. So Chile trying to climb back into that second South American tier. Of course, Argentina and Brazil, a class apart. Uruguay seems to be a re-emerging power in South American soccer. Under coach Juan Ramon Carrasco, they're finding their creative touch, and they're scoring a lot of goals. And then behind them, we have Colombia, Ecuador, Paraguay, perhaps Peru, perhaps Chile. And then Bolivia and Venezuela look to be the, the, player, the teams that could be bringing up the rear in South America. Well, so far I've seen Chile with nothing new from the from last uh, qualifying. So it's going to be uh, tough for them to come out from the bottom portion of the table, of the standings. Well, they're counting on the points that they can win at home. And, of course, they're going against the winner of the qualifying. Watch out here. Argentina coming forward. Crespo. And now Contreras sends it straight up. He's looking for help. A desperate look in wow. his eyes. Contreras. That was an amateur play by a professional player. Contreras, the by the way. captain of the defenders captain of Chile. Captain, no less. Played for Monaco. Played for Sporting of Lisbon. And now playing for Celta de Vigo. Samuel fouling Hector Tapia. There's a substitution. That's in the box. Cesar Delgado fighting with Olarra. And that's a foul from Samuel on the other side. So Samuel claims. Mauricio Pinilla comes in. No. Mar Gonzalez goes off. No, Hector Tapia. There's two substitutions. Pinillo coming in for Mark. And number 15 also coming in. It's Mauricio Pinilla. And then we'll see the other substitution. We'll tell you right now. Jorge Acuna.
who came in for this Acuna and Pinilla for Gonzalez and let's see who the other so one was. We saw Hector Tapia step off the field. Okay, so Tapia's gone. I don't know, Tapia was busier than Navia. Navia is not having a good day. Let's confirm that in a little while. So where we see Navia on your screen, and there we see the confirmation. Pinilla comes in for Hector Tapia, the former Perugia player, Hector Tapia. Now playing for Leo. Well, now he will wait till Wednesday when Chile will play Peru. Alexander on the ground. Mauricio Pinilla is interesting. It was uh, recommended by Zamorano for Inter, Inter bottom. The Zamorano recommended Mauricio Pinilla. And then he was sent from Inter to Chievo, Verona, he's still in Italy. Yeah, he's on loan in Chievo. So we'll see whether Pinilla can make a difference in this match. As Argentina now has control of the ball and control of the score. Oh. Marco Gonzalez, a defensive midfielder, gets a yellow card with a foul on Aymar. It's in the 13th minute. Aymar gets the ball under control and P Gonzalez comes in late. Samuel with the ball looking for Aymar, no luck. And now it's Chile in the counterattack. Pinilla fighting with Ayala, Caballero. It's not like what he sees. He sends the ball over the line for a throw-in. One of the things that Caballero has brought to the Argentine goal is we take a look at Claudio Lopez. We're not sure how much time he'll get in this match, but I think Delgado has done a great job, actually, of feeding crosses in the middle, be it for Hernan Crespo or for somebody else coming in. I think Crespo should come out. He's having a terrible game. He's missed two clear goals. Should give a chance to Saviola who will probably get along well with D'Alessandro and Aymar. Good ball. D'Alessandro looking for, actually, it looked like Vivas. Oh, Crespo fouling Contreras. 15th minute in the second half. Well, Chile with the ball. Chile slowly pushing their lines up. I think it's because no offense really for Argentina in the second half. The only chance in the sixth minute when Delgado had a shot taken care of by Tapia. Watch out, Acuna with the ball. The Goal. shot. It's a Chile, 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 Chile goal. It's a goal by number 17, Mirovan Mirosevic. So Chile comes back from a two goal deficit and they catch Argentina napping at the back. They're definitely napping. They've been, it's not a surprise because Chile has been pushing up a little bit more than normal. There we see Mirosevic sliding behind the two Argentine midfielders. Acuna, that substitute. Mirosevic behind Sanetti in front of Ayala. A good finish by the player that plays in Argentina and Racing. 2-1, to one, 16th minute, and now Argentina goes forward. That's a foul, Crespo. We were wondering why Mirosevic hadn't started the match. However, he comes in, and now we've got a contest. 2-1, to one, Marcelo Bielsa looked like the, hand was, like the match was clearly in hand. No problems at all for Argentina, and Chile is making a match out of it. Here comes D'Alessandro with Verón. Now Gonzalez gets fouled from behind by Pinilla. We'll see the players of Chile pushing up and pressing. Argentina is having trouble coming out of the back. They're too relaxed right now. And you see Mauricio Pinilla, the youngster, and Saviola warming up or on the, stretching on the sideline. On the bench, we don't know what the substitutions might be. Crespo loses the ball right here. And promptly given back by the Chilean defender. It was number two. It was Cristian Alvarez. So Chile, the substitutions for Juvenal almost pay dividends right away. 
Uh, as we see Alessandro tracking back and fouling and does not give a hand to his opponent. He's, he's looking for trouble. I don't like the attitude on Alessandro. Player that talented shouldn't have to play or, or basically shoot his mouth. Look at that. That's at least a yellow card. And then they hang on to his leg and he doesn't like that. And he has something to say. So the Chilean fans now awoken by the goal by Mirosevic and Pablo Caballero. We are talking about the sense of calm he brings to the Argentine goal. I'm not 100% uh, content on Caballero. You're not convinced by that? No, not 100%. How come? I don't like his performance in the World Cup, especially that free kick. I don't know if probably could have done better with that. And uh, I don't know. It's just something that I don't like about him. He doesn't convince me 100%. Now, none of the other. Burgos doesn't convince me either. So. Well, Carlos Roa is back. Roa doesn't like, I don't like Roa. Matias Almeida. It looks like ready. it's going to be Verón for uh, Almeida for Verón coming in because Verón right now could be getting tired. Plus, when you're holding on to a 2 1 lead, Almeida is more of a fiercer tackler and also very well, very good organizer in front of the defense. I don't know. I think Verón did not play a bad match. But uh, I think the experiment is not going to work in the long run. Here comes Sanetti. He leaves it for Aymar. Actually, that was Vivas bringing the ball out of the back. And it'll be Almeida coming in. Some people think Verón had a good performance. I think it was acceptable considering his role has changed. Yeah, acceptable because they're playing at home against Chile, who was very weak in the first half. But I don't know, against a stronger team, I don't think it's going to work. Well, it'll be interesting to see how Verón does when you have Rivaldo, Ronaldo, and Ronaldinho coming at him. Here's Crespo with the cross, gets a header on it. An easy save for Nelson Tapia. First time Crespo connects. It's the 20th minute in the second half. Crespo's had a couple of chances. And here comes Chile. Pinilla. Two Argentine defenders get in each other's way. Gonzalez now picks up the ball. Kili Gonzalez plays the pass to D'Alessandro. He leaves it bouncing in the area. That could have been a mistake, which could have caused some trouble for Argentina. Viva. Sends the ball up. Pablo Aymar gets control of it. Plays it to Delgado. Delgado plays it, chips it. There's a shot from Delgado. No! Oh, that was close. Nelson Tapia with the save. The second time that Tapia denies Delgado, this time with a good cut, gets rid of the defender, finds his face, looks up, good shot, and Tapia. Second time, the first one was in the sixth minute. Here's Pinilla sending it long. He finds himself all the way on the other side of the field now, defending on the left side where he usually attacks on the right side. Almeida. Aymar. Aymar holds off challenge from two players. Now the ball at D'Alessandro's feet. Acuna. Martel. And a sliding tackle from Vivas. Now Cristian Alvarez comes up in Chile. Now showing some signs of life on the attack. Here comes Chile on the left side. And Rodrigo Perez tries to get the wall pass. Nothing doing. Vivas protects the ball and comes out playing out of the back. Good composure by Vivas, although it was close. He almost made a mistake. He thought the ball was going to leave earlier. There's Delgado winning and going, keeps going forward. I am really impressed by Delgado. Look at this cross. He puts it on Crespo's foot, who misses it. Crespo seems out of sorts a bit, tries to dribble. He holds off and 
Acuna takes the ball away from him. Crespo, it's out of timing, or I'm serious about the eyesight. He's, he's, he seems to be missing from the ball by inches always. And this guy's got the eye of the tiger right now. Delgado. He's got a chance and he's fighting to perform in his first opportunity to start for his national team. And they're chanting Marado, still in honor of Diego Maradona. Tonetti with the pass, Almeida loses it. And if Argentina can hold on these 10 minutes where Chile is going at him trying to get the tying goal as Mirotevic gets taken down by Ayala. Ayala could have received a yellow card for that or should have. Falling in midfield. I don't think there's need for that. Ayala is a borderline dirty player. Look at that. That's a yellow card, at least. Oh, a yellow card, definitely. Good Watch chance, out, another yeah. chance. Chile, Hector Tapia tries to get the ball. Actually, Navia is the one. And here comes Martel with a shot. And Martel, the player from Jaguares in Mexico, had a chance to tie the score. And as I said before, Chile now coming forward and putting Argentina under pressure. We see some action right here. How things change. So Chile trying to get the tying goal. We have about 20 minutes left in the match. It's the first World Cup qualifier on the road to Germany 2006. Right here, a Goal TV production. Looks like an easy victory so far for Argentina until the second half with the substitutions by when at almost everything changed. And that, that's a stupid play right there by the Chilean player because Jorge Acuna has had a good match. He came in, they're both going to get a yellow or Acuna is going to get a red. Both players should get a yellow, at least. For Acuna, he showed some talent today, but he almost got himself thrown out of the next match. And now, Ubaldo Aquino takes the ball. He says, I'm going to sort this out. Everybody, leave me alone, and I'm going to... He's going to... He should hand out a couple of cards. Well, this is only in the 25th minute. Things are heating up. One for you. So, Pinilla with the yellow card. Acuna. I'm sorry, Acuna. Here we see Aymar. Let's see the play again. He got all ball. It looks like. And so. That's another bad attitude. That's, Aymar that's not acceptable. Insults Acuna and Acuna pushes him to the ground. Completely unacceptable. Saviola hopefully coming in for Crespo is having a bad afternoon in Buenos Aires. No yellow card for uh, Aymar, huh? No, they both got a yellow card. Okay. So Pablito Aymar a little bit nervous. Usually, he has a lot of players nipping at his heels. But that was a clean tackle from Acuna. Watch out here. Nothing happening there. Alessandro getting into another scrape. And here he is on the ball. The match gets a little bit sloppy for the last couple of minutes. And we're taking a look at Javier Saviola, former River Plate player. He's used to this stadium right here. Comes in. He now plays for Barcelona. Comes substituting for another ex-River Plate player, Hernán Crespo, who has not had a good match. So, Saviola. Two different kinds of players. Javier is not bad in the air, by the way. I mean, as small as he is, he's good in tight spaces, but he also gets some goals with his head. He's also a great counter-attacking player. He's a great player. 
So here Martel. comes Martel. Gets around the corner. Get around Gonzalez. Sends the cross in. Ball still in the area. Navia runs past it. And here comes Argentina. And Alessandro goes down. And it's he came back to the left after he'd gotten around the defender and he went to beat him again. Jorge Acuna close to getting his second yellow card there. And here comes Delgado floating the ball in. And too far for Aima. And in the past, uh, you saw Ayala trying to control the ball in the six-yard box. That's incredible. That could have really cost them. And this man knows Argentina now is not playing as well as they did at the beginning of, the, of this match, especially in the first half. Chile especially, has up. especially a one-goal difference between the two teams. Now Pinilla leads, leads it in the middle. Pinilla, now Argentina steals the ball. Chile sends the ball long. Navia tries to chase it down. And Caballero brings it under control. You're right, Rafa. I mean, in a, and Ayala also has a history of being sort of a, what I call the master of disaster. Own goals, penalty kicks in the area. Ooh, look at that one. Samuel. Wow, that's a red card. Yep. Walter Samuel. If there's ever a situation where the videotape evidence... Ooh, there we see. Another what is wrong with what? Argentina? I don't understand. They are winning two to one. They're complicating themselves. They're they're build, you know they're digging a, a hole for themselves because they're not playing well. They're not attacking anymore. And they're losing their head. And they're losing their head and losing the challenges. Chile is playing stronger. And they're losing concentration. That does not help to put the ball on target. And even Pablito Aymar on your screen, one of the more even-tempered plays on the team, has shown signs of being out of control. And of course, you know, Nelson Vivas, he, you know, you, you saw his, if you could read lists, he said something that rhymes with Batistuta to the Chilean player. And they're going to get, he's going to get a card here from, for the foul from behind. So, Vivas. Ubaldo Aquino, oh, it's Saviola gets the foul. And now things are heating up. I think Chile is taking advantage of this. They know that Argentina, for some reason, is, lo is losing its head under the Chilean pressure. So a yellow card for Javier Saviola in the 75th minute of the match. It's the third for Argentina. We have Two for Chile, three for Chile right now. Camirosevic, Acuna, and Contreras. Watch out here, here comes Chile! And Pinilla puts the move on, but his shot goes wide. Well, you cannot blame him for taking a shot, but he had a man open. It's Reynaldo Navia. But don't blame this kid for taking a shot. That's what a forward should do. Look at that, between the legs. Well, that's a payoff for Vivas insulting him. It makes him look terrible there. So there you see Pinilla, the youngster. When it looked His debut was against Peru in 2003. He was born in Santiago. He played for Diego Verona. It looked like the love affair was going to start again with the fans and the Argentine national team. But after what I've seen right now, I think this is going to get worse. Speaking of acceptance by the fans i think the chilean team has shown quite a bit you thought that two nothing then they come out to defend and they've come forward gotten a goal back and they're threatening with the tying goal they changed their attitude they're fighting harder for the ball they're winning the time challenges and, and they're missing three key players david pisado who doesn't get along so well with juvenal olmos they see marcelo salas the symbol of the national team right now as we hear the argentine bench asking for Calm from their players, and they're also missing Pablo Galdames, who had a broken leg last Sunday in the match for Racing in Argentina. He'll be out. Watch out here! Here comes Chile! It's a tying goal! Chile, Chile, Chile! Go, go, go! Reynaldo Navia, we were just talking about this, and it's two to two. What a golazo from Chile! Great attacking, quick balls, good movement. Great finish by Reynaldo Navia. He's got rid of the defender easily, I might add. And a great comeback here for Chile. In the 32nd minute, the game is tied at two. Wow, what a surprise. 
Chile coming back from a 2-0 deficit. We mentioned how they had come out with a renewed fighting spirit. Spirit. Here we see right here. It looks like Pinilla coming through from the back. Look at the space. He turns Vivas inside out. And I think it was Contreras moving up from the attack. Look at Navia. And Caballero comes out and he can't get the ball. Well, he does not cut the angle well. In the first round comes when Ayala, instead of sweeping, he comes out to mark. Then they get rid of Nelson Vivas. And they, we have a match now. So Marcelo Bielsa watches his team lose their head and give up a 2-0 lead. And Chile right now is taking it to Argentina. Well, surprise, surprise, Rafa. Two oh. to nothing. If I were to tell you that in the 65th minute of the match, Argentina would be winning two nothing, could you have bet on a final result? No, I was going to mention it. It was looking more like a practice match more and more. And how things change so quickly in this game. Aquino making sure everything is under control in the box. So here comes D'Alessandro with a shot. Ooh, that was close. And Olarra doesn't, I don't know if he got ahead to it. It looks like he did. Corner kick for Argentina. And now Argentina looking as desperate as they did in the match against Sweden. Olarra heads it backwards. We're talking, of course, about the match in the World Cup, which knocked them out of that 2002 World Cup, where they tied 1-1. Incredible result right here. Argentina tying Chile 2-2. Two two. And we were mentioning about love affairs between fans and their coaches and their players. And there's a man, Juvenal Olmos, who has really brought a different Chilean team, even without their best-known players. They were hoping to come in. They were willing to give up the points in this match and going home to take on Peru on Wednesday. And Chile now looking to well they could steal all three points if argentina doesn't watch out here comes aymar d'alessandro aymar again on the wall pass puts a pass in the middle uh, saviola can't get to it and now argentina steals it back delgado cuts it back inside against acuna watch out here's a header by olarra clears it out and here comes chile on the counter-attack, up and back, Mirosevic, who's made such a difference in this match. They have to kick the ball out because Olarra is on the ground when oh, Saviola dove and they both hit head in the box. The, oh, it's Aymar. I thought it was Saviola. So Argentina is not going to send everybody forward. And Chile, as you just saw, the last goal, that great counter-attack goal by Navia. Delgado, probably the best. Molarra gets ahead to it. And Aymar throws himself at the ball, finds Olarra's head. No, Olarra's shoulder, perhaps. Or a head, because they're both holding their head. This is dangerous. They might have a concussion. Hopefully everything will be okay. This all happens in the 35th minute. So the Chilean fans now start to celebrate what could be a very important point. Two World Cup qualifying ago, two World Cup qualifiers, a tie in this stadium meant with a goal from Marcelo Vega on a free kick, one to one. They tied Argentina and they made it to the World Cup. So now Chile looking to take a point back to Santiago from Buenos Aires. And Olarra looks to have gotten the worst out of the clash with Aymar. Aymar is still a little shaken. 
On the other side, they're making sure the defender as well because they really need him in there, the tough Olarra. He needs to shake the cobwebs out because they will need him. Of course, Bielsa decided not to play with Placente, not to play with Sorin on the left side. Delgado has done a good job. Oh, he switched to the left now. But it's Kili Gonzalez. Kili Gonzalez will, will do fine when he's playing at home. But when he's playing away, he cannot. he's not a defender. He's an attacker. So they need to bring back either Placente or Sorin, or both. You can tell how Argentina has been hurt in the counterattack. Nobody comes back. Everybody attacks. I mean, it's an... It's unthinkable right now because Argentina has been to every World Cup since 1974. But from what we're seeing, if Chile can do this to them when they attack, I'd hate to see Argentina in a long qualifier once the other teams realize that Argentina without the ball can be hurt. Well, I think Argentina will be fine. Here comes Saviola. Watch out here, D'Alessandro. Goes to the ground. We have seven minutes left to go. Argentina attacking. A cross from Delgado. Contreras chests it over the end line. There's Saviola looking for trouble again. And, um, well, I was going to finish my thought. I think Argentina will be fine. They'll make it to the World Cup. I'm not sure Bielsa will make it to the World Cup. Though. Even if he qualifies, the speculation is, watch out. Aymar with the header, heads it over the crossbar. And Nelson Tapia wants to have a word with him. She's playing with her head. They know the kids are, are not settled right now. The kids are not all right, as yep. who would say. Definitely the kids are not all right right now. Clear chance for Aymar in the 38th minute. She not headed into the net. Maybe he has a headache already from the other it's Tapia playing with his head there. Nelson Tapia, the only leftover veteran along with Marcelo Salas from the 1998 World Cup team. Now here comes Chile. Goes to the ground. Watch out. Gonzalez has a clash with a Chilean attacker, and it's not over yet. No, Nadia and Cristian Gonzalez, and now the match is getting out of hand for Valdaquil. Chile Gonzalez was making a huge mistake in the back. After he won the ball, he stepped on it. So that's the... Uh, find that he does not know how to defend and well, while doing that he picked the wrong spot to do it well, here. look at that a normal let's see what happens here Chile Gonzalez complains about it's a kind play of a delayed again we'll see what happens Samuel who took a huge stomping of a player and Mirosevic who's been a key to the resurgence by Chile in the second half. Here comes Chile and Pinilla loses the ball. He's afraid of being kicked there, Pinilla. D'Alessandro comes forward. Looking for Daimar. Aymar now. Actually, Saviola. Martel chases him. Martel's had two completely different tasks in the first and the second half. Aymar. Loses the ball, Olarra takes it away, and he seems to have lost his fighting spirit. Gotta change Aymar. Need another player in there. Here comes Chile. It's Yojo Lopez should come in. Here's a long ball, Navia. One-on-one one -on -one with Samuel as he waits for some help. And Delgado goes down. And somebody stepped on. Samuel stepped on Delgado. On that should be a red card. Yep, he stepped on Jorge Acuna. Should be a red card. It might not be the only one. So Acuna, I think Aquino has lost control of this match. I think he, he's going to let it slide. No, he's asking two players to come out. Take charge, it's getting out of control. Red card Samuel. for Samuel and red card for Acuna for the punch, he says. So Cristian Alvarez looks like it. Cristian Alvarez looks like it. We'll see. Definitely, Samuel is definitely out of there and he deserves to be out of there. It's not the first bad intention foul he commits today.
So both teams down to 10 men. Delgado does a good job here. Here, Acuna. And he, there he goes. Look at that. And he steps oh. on him lightly. Lightly, but... I think somewhat, well, he stomped on the guy before. Yep. And in this case, I think he didn't deserve the, the red card here, but he'd already had a one instance of the same kind of situation. And that's going to hurt Argentina more than, than Chile, I think. Cristian Alvarez refuses to step off the field. Well, he's having a great game, Cristian Alvarez, so far. Too bad for defense, I think he got the red card. So Walter Samuel, the player from Roma, and we see the coach, Uwen Alonis. What's wrong with They're the yelling at each other, and it's actually Bielsa's assistant heating things up. It doesn't as they're benefit losing them. their head. Yeah, it, it's that coach is productive. It doesn't make sense what they're doing, the Argentines. That coach is a former coach of Renato Cesarini's school. It should be a school in Rosario that makes develop youngsters in the city. That the school was created by the Solari brothers, pretty much, Jorge and Eduardo. So we'll see as he asks. Delgado to get on the end of the wall. Aymar. And Argentina moves forward. And look, as they're arguing with Aquino, they basically could finish with nine players if they don't watch out. Cristian Gonzalez. Arguing with Aquino. Oh, it's our... match done a good job defending and attacking Delgado the Cruz Azul player Saviola actually goes on it's another shot and Tapia gets it under control no problem at all again a good save by Tapia this is in the 45th minute Gonzalez sends a swerving left-footed shot in there wasn't easy at all for Tapia well Tapia saved in the Second half, a shot by Delgado, another shot by Delgado, and this one for Chile Delgado, Chile Gonzalez. So, five minutes of extra time added on by the fourth man, which would be, well, it would be Hector Olmos, actually Atilio Invernici who lifted the thing, and Argentina coming forward, and Javier Saviola, too little time on the field to really make a difference, especially with the matches rough as it's been the last 20 minutes. And we have Juvenal, almost a former coach, well, former player for Universidad Católica, barely 40 years of age. A great debut for the man in World Cup qualifier. There's Na eh, Navia, who scored a great goal. It was a tying goal for Chile. It looks like almost made the right move by bringing in Mirosevic and Acuna. Yeah. Well, there could be a red card. Yep. Right off. Not a smart foul by Nadia. So the Colo Colo player, otherwise it might not have been a red card at another time, but at that moment it was the wrong play to make. These two teams, they love to get in trouble on their own. It doesn't make sense. What is he thinking? It doesn't make sense. These are professional players playing for their national teams in World Cup qualifying, making amateur mistakes. So Navia, the player who plays in Monarcas Morelia in Mexico, is for some more time off the clock. Chile looking to get at least a point out of this outing to Buenos Aires. Argentina, Delgado, still coming forward. It's not over yet, Rafa. I know, it's a mistake by Bielsa, because if he's going to send somebody to cross, he should put a person that knows how to cross, although this guy has done a great job. Delgado, he's, he's a sub forward. He's not a winger that crosses ball. He should be in the middle, yeah. looking to head the that's, ball home, rather than crossing it for... Saviola, As who's the shortest man on the field. specializes in crossing, do that if you want him to cross. Well, he could have had Claudio Lopez on the bench. This could be the beginning of 
Well, uh, the end for Marcelo Bielsa, who's won 70%, 80% actually of the points in qualifying. Here's Delgado with another cross, and the formula's not working. As we hear somebody say, tranquilo, yeah. take it easy. Well, uh, so Bielsa has had more points in qualifying than Bilardo, who had 72% of the points, 62% of the points for Pasarela, who qualified for World Cup 98 against Chile in the match by beating Chile. So Chile, right now making Argentina's life difficult as we are about to finish the fourth minute of extra time and the score, two to nothing between Argentina and Chile. And it's their fault, I believe. They got in trouble by not keeping concentration and not playing their game and being a little arrogant. So the party's not over yet, Rafa, because there's one minute left. Chile trying to hold on to this tie, which are celebrating as a victory. Well, luckily, uh, the coach, Juvenal Olmos, fixed or made amends because he made mistakes with the starting lineup. It's proven when Acuna and Mirosevic and also Pinilla came in, the team changed. So luckily for him, he realized he had made mistakes and fixed them. Now, I think Bielsa keep, keeps making the same mistakes, not with the same person, but in the World Cup, he had Sorin playing almost as a forward, and he's not a forward, so he's going to miss goals. Here he's got Delgado playing as a winger. He's not a winger. So, Rafa, we come to the end of extra time, and here comes Chile. Pinilla, one against three. He's going to slow things down. He holds on to the ball now, gives it up. Almeida steals it. D'Alessandro now too far back. What's happening with Pinilla, the substitute? How can he give up like that? Well, Pinilla evidently is tired. He's However, substitute. let's see if they don't make him pay for that mistake. Here comes Saviola with a cross in and headed back. Offside, I thought. They're right, the defenders from Chile. No, they're asking for a handball. I'm not sure what they want. And so... The extra five minutes are over. We're waiting for Ubaldo Aquino as the first match. He's not outside. He's not outside. Chile, an incredible performance coming back from two goals down. Listen to the fans. Oh. Bielsa could. The fans are going to kill the Argentine team. And that's the end of the match. Chile ties Argentina and Buenos Aires two to two. And there, I think, is one of the men of the match. Jorge Acuna, along with Mirosevic to substitute, they turned this match, and D'Alessandro, who had such a great match in the first half, with the bitterness of a tie. The faces from the Argentine player, the same as we saw in Tokyo, in Japan, in the World Cup. Rafael Olarra does a good job at the back. The Chilean fans obviously believe that this team now has had the right start to a World Cup qualifying campaign and Marcelo Bielsa the bitterness continues Juan Sebastián Verón he'll be around for a long time we don't know how long Bielsa will be there well we'll come back with the highlights after this in the